just a, a very warm welcome to you. Um, this uh, week's team are a, a group of shrinking, very shy violets, and we'd be very grateful if you'd be ever so kind to us. Um, we're facilitating you, hopefully more than you think that you come to listen to a presentation, if that makes sense. So we've, tr we've designed it to try and involve you and involve your thoughts and your responses to various things that you're going to see on the screen and hear from us. I'm Clive, I'm from Long Martin, and I'm the Rector for the Heart of Eden Benefits. I'm Annabelle, I'm from Moreland, and I'm PCC Secretary there. <laughs> Among other things. And I'm Glenda, and I go to walk at Chapel and have several hats on different things. So this is the second of four road shows. And the, uh, the first one we had was, we talked on uh, money and finance. And tonight it's on mission, a green key themes for the mission community. And then we have another one, resourcing budgets and setting and accounting. And that's on the 13th of October at Moreland and New Village Hall. And then there's working together on the 20th of October at T-Bay. Sorry, at, yes, at T-Bay. So um, that's, that's where we set tonight um, for, for our discussions. Um, and we'll all join in one with another. Thank you, Grandpa. And we thought uh, that you might be interested to pick up uh, and uh, look at some of the themes that came out of one of the questions that came up last time, which was about challenges and opportunities. So these were raised at the road number one roadshow. Um, it gives a flavour of what people were thinking about who came to that meeting. So the challenges that people were describing were the lack of clergy, small ageing congregations, a lack of funds, changes in society of all sorts, and really a question mark over what buildings are really needed for the mission uh, of the church in this uh, generation. And then the opportunities, which actually flowed very uh, well, uh, included the positives of having visible, constant buildings uh, scattered across the Eden Valley and beyond, um, yeah, connections with young people and schools, including Church of England church schools, the connections that we're able to make uh, through weddings, uh, gifted and talented people in our area, uh, social connections which are made in all sorts of ways uh, through our churches and through people who are members of our churches. Of course, we've had the wider world of COVID which opened up all the possibilities for what we've done online. Um, there are issues to do with the climate, that uh, if we say and do the right things, we might connect better with the world in which we live. Uh, the online presence that I've mentioned, and then the potential of new financial strategies. So, Glenda's going to go and stand again, and I think, Annabelle, you're going to go and scribble. I'm going to scribble. Um, because we wanted a short opening discussion, more by way of you giving feedback. Um, you've seen what people said last time, and I know some of you were here uh, at the previous one, but is there anything that wasn't on that list? I'll go back to it again so you can see and think, is there something else that you are thinking of? But over to Glenda and Anna.
if I can just make the observation, I mean, this, this is, what, what we, we decided to do was just to kind of reopen this question because it was posed last time. And I hope it will be asked again at the third and fourth workshops because I think we've got an accumulation of wisdom here then which we can, you know, we're, we're going to refine and uh, hopefully have a really strong statement of, of positives and negatives um, at the end of this process. So um, I think we'll move on um, and we're going to move on and Glenda you're going to lead us in a, an opening prayer. Pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask that as we meet here tonight for, uh, to discuss uh, the mission community within our churches, varied as they are, we ask that you will be with us, help us to focus and discuss um, in a way that you would want us to, and be with each and every one in it whichever way we're thinking with that we can have this open discussion and that you uh, will bless us um, as we do this in Jesus name. Amen. So uh, this slide actually comes from some of the slides that we were using around the time when the Lent groups we had earlier this year were on the God for all themes, uh, treading gently, speaking boldly, caring deeply and following daily. And behind that, uh, Bishop Emma uh, said at the time, well, what is the why behind those four themes? It's about releasing what God has already given us locally. And maybe part of that story is the Crosby Ravensworth development and turnaround, and there are many other stories like that, I think. Uh, the whole people of God, this is about all Christians and what we do together. Um, and I would have loved it on our front row tonight if we'd had people like Ashley Liston here from the Baptist Church and other people locally, but also other people from our other churches, because we can't afford not to work with each other really, uh, and I think the mission community provides a great opportunity for that. And then for the whole mission of God. So some of us have a very narrowly defined mission, view of mission. If you've been in Appleby at the Horse Fair, you would have heard people with very strong Northern Irish accents uh, preaching hellfire and damnation outside St. Lawrence Church. Um, and there are other people who are handling, handing out uh, Roman Catholic artefacts and rosaries and things, and there are other people doing other things. The whole mission of God includes all sorts of possibilities, uh, including seeing the bigger picture of God's uh, mission to care and respect people and creation. Next slide, please, yeah. So this is teeny-weeny, but it's meant to tell you a story. Uh, Glenda's going to come and develop that in a moment. But just to say, the God for All uh, themes, uh, first of all, follow daily at the top, are mirrored in the Methodist mission plan about growing and learning, and in the Church of England's five marks of missions, teach, baptise, make new believers. The God for All theme of care deeply is uh, matched by the good neighbour uh, imperative from the Methodist mission plan and the C of E's respond to human needs and loving service. And then God for All talks about speaking boldly. Of course, um, we know that evangelism is a big theme in the Methodist church, Cliff College and other places promote evangelism in very powerful ways. Um, and then in the Church of England we talk about telling people or proclaiming good news. Tread Gently is matched by the Church of England mark for uh, striving to safeguard creation. Um, and then I think it's worth noting that the Methodist Mission Plan also has a focus on worship and on challenging injustice. And those haven't actually been highlighted in the God for All mission, uh, vision. Um, and the Church of England also has that interest in uh, pursuing peace and reconciliation, especially with the current uh, Archbishop. So that's just to paint a picture of what I think we're talking about when we're talking about mission. Um, and I think it would be really interesting to know if there are other areas that you think don't fit into those categories. And you, know, you might want to venture and say, well, actually we do this 
we have a llama farm and we invite people to come along and stroke llamas and they love it and, and then we tell them about Jesus. Whatever it is, there might be something creative and unique. But Glenda's going to come and run through the final column. We're looking at the, um, the yellow column. Aren't yes, some example, yes. local examples. So we've, got, uh, we've got study groups and lab groups. Uh, we have food bank, renew wellbeing, bereavement, preaching inv invitational services, eco church, climate Sunday, chorister camp, Billing Station, Christian Aid, Tear Fund. So what, you know, in that we have a huge range of things already going on amongst, amongst us all. We, uh, we do in mission, but as Clive said before, it, it's coming out in, in lots of different ways. Um, these are just a few guidelines, and I'm sure you'll have plenty um, other things that you you may want to, you know, share with us as to what's going on. Um, well, I'm going to instantly add one thing, which I know is coming up in a couple of weeks, and that's the Harvest Home that we have at Moreland, because there's always people who come to that who never regularly set foot in church, they will, but they will always turn out to that, and that's... In some ways, yes, it, it is. It's all about celebrating the harvest, but we come together, and it's such a community time. And what's the word we get? It's atmosphere. Real atmosphere, yeah. and that's what we all buy into it. And that, and that is a huge thing for us. Welcome to the mission community. <laughs> <laughs> the mission community is one thing. Yes, it is yeah. sharing yeah. success. Yeah. 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 And failures, but you know, and learning. Just to, uh, I'm just going to rewind the slide and I'll explain why. I didn't mention it, but I was originally aspiring to talk about some biblical reasons for mission. And then I found one of these quaint uh, kind of picture things, which, which is just Matthew 19, 26. With God, all things are possible. Yeah. And I, I rather like the idea of that being the motto for the mission community. Yeah. <laughs> because it gives permission for God to be working in our midst. You know, that's powerful. Glenda and Annabelle, I think you deserve to have a pause. Uh, and I'm just going to put, say a, a couple of things. Now, apologies again for the scale, but it's just to make a point. Um, and there are two halves to this picture. One of them says ecumenical mission, and it's more like a lot of the things we've been, we were talking about originally that happen out of our churches or in our church buildings. 
And then we've got pioneering mission, which is exactly what we're talking about in relation to Rachel um, and to what Dan and Christie and others do. And I, I've used the framework called Mapping Our Galilee, and it comes from something called Leading Your Church into Growth. Last night, after nearly two years here, at a Mother's Union uh, evening, a lady said to me, how can we help our churches grow? And I said, I've been waiting to hear someone ask that question for two years, sort of. I mean, people refer to it indirectly. But what this exercise does, it gets you to think a bit like Jesus' ministry in Galilee, all the different places he went to, the different sorts of things that he did, the different engagements. And yet you come up with baptisms, you come up with uh, weddings, funerals, you come up with uh, all sorts of things. I can't even read my own writing from here. But. Volunteering links. Applebee Horse Fair, possibly one of the biggest missional opportunities that there is going in any given year. Parents and toddlers work, messy church, outdoor church, which Rachel has not been mentioned, but is another innovation uh, working with children and families in uh, the wood at Appleby, uh, a blaze again, big events with young people, groups with specific interests. I mean, at Dufton, there's a very gentle, it's called Q&A, isn't it? Question and answer, which is an open discussion place where you identify topics and then you come together to talk about those. So. It's just to, to explain that that might be a tool that we might want to use uh, to c gather some of this information together and think about where we are in our Galilee. You know, what are the bits that we have to do now? Do you remember Jesus used to say, I can't do that yet because I've got to do this? And maybe we've got to make some decisions about what we're investing in. Second. And <laughs> I'd only been in... Uh, the area for about a couple of weeks and we had a mission community council where Stuart said right we've got to get together a plan for what we're doing in our mission community you know, basically events and things across a year January, February, March, April, May, June so June of course someone's in the group saying oh we've got the rush bearing things that go on at Walk Up and Musgrave you know it's a fantastic community engagement thing and, pe and basically, you fill in a plan, and I think we do need a plan like that, that we can share together and be enthused about for 2022. Mm -hmm. I think, let's use this positivity to project and decide some things that we'll do together, uh, and also recognise that some things, you know, that we can't do, we're just not ready for things yet. It took us about 12 months, but Rachel, my wife, I'm very proud to say, led an initiative in our previous uh, town to have a town-wide Advent Carol service and 400 people turned up because we planned it together. All the churches were involved and it was just a powerful, powerful thing. And most of the people who came were of none faith. <laughs> you know, they re really, there were people there because they were just intrigued. What's this about? Get into smaller groups so if we can maybe discuss a little more between us all. Um, and we're going to focus, well, we're thinking about the four, the four themes and what we're really going to get excited about. And then what is it that you need to do and what help do you need? We can also look at that <coughs> as in what, what could you want to get out of, what, what would you want to get out of the mission community? What is it that you need? To, from it, what what activities, what groups do you think that we're maybe ones that you've seen here? You think actually that's something we really need in our community in our village. Okay, so something which had kind of emerged already and Sue articulated it very powerfully just before we went into groups. 
Um, I think a question I'd like to ask you in relation to the conversations you've been having is what are the things that you think could be replicated across the mission community as a collective effort? What, what are the big things that we could do together? And on the other side of that, what are the things like Rich Bearing at uh, Walk Up of Musgrave or something that's very specific like Families Together in T-Bay? Um, uh, what are the things that really work very well where you are but you don't think they'd necessarily transfer to somewhere else? How do you, did you go down any of those roads at all? Did you come up with any big themes? Or is it all still a murky mixture? I remember the first of the Lent groups being on and uh, meeting people the first time, literally, from Orton and Tea Bay, and, and then saying how amazing it was to meet, meet together with people from across the whole area. They were palpably thrilled to know that there were other Christians, because we're so spread out, really, uh, dispersed in small village situations, but there's strength in the wider network, really. Um, we're going to wrap up uh, this conversation, um, and it's a bit of a... This was just a, a closing thought that I had which might connect with what we've just been talking about. When we're agreeing themes for the mission community, I think there is a real desire to value the traditional church. Um, and, and to respect the fact that there are wonderful opportunities. I mean, Sunday afternoon we had a Lady Anne Clifford uh, concert with Tom Tomkins and Wilkes and people who were musicians and composers at the time when Lady Anne Clifford was around. And a young historian spoke about Lady Anne Clifford. And it was just powerful. It wasn't an overtly Christian occasion, but it was really powerful. And I know the Moreland Chorister camp is legend in terms of celebrating the most traditional thing you could possibly imagine. Uh, but managing this year, I, I ha haven't heard it yet, but the jazz uh, mass just sounded a fabulous thing. You know, I mean, it's just creativity within the traditional. And then there's the future church that we know we need. You know, this I've called it charisma because I think it's, how are we going to have a church that includes young people in 20, 30 years' time? Uh, what are the seeds of that going to be? Uh, what is it that's going to galvanise um, that? There are fixed roles which we can build on, and the occasional offices are an example of that, although I heard one of my colleagues recently saying they, were, well, they weren't sure that there was a future for the church either in funerals or weddings as if you know, that may, no, not, may not be the fixture that we thought it would be forever. Are there other ways to be Christians? I mean, Dan and Christy Patimore are exploring, pushing back boundaries, trying to do things in different ways, um, and I know that Rachel is doing the same thing. And I couldn't believe it when our network youth leader mentioned in a prayer letter the other week, oh, and the latest thing I'm kicking off is a men's group, <laughs> which... <laughs> which I thought was zany enough to be exciting because you kind of think, what's she doing that for? You know, but she is. Um, and then I think this is the blending it all together, is the synergy and the creativity. Somehow, with all those possibilities, our mission community could be an amazing, an amazing umbrella for all sorts of things. And a place where we feel safe and trust one another, um, I just think, I, and we, going back to something Annabelle said um, of the, the moorland harvest, she rec after we explored it a bit, she, we realised the thing really was the atmosphere and the welcome about that event, which keeps people wanting to come back. And surely we need to do more things like that that are, you know, people don't want to leave.
because they're enjoying it so much, which is what Glenda said to you of your. So over to Glenda and Annabelle just to wrap up the session. So we've still got two more roadshows to go, which are on your sheets, and we talked about them earlier. And we're going to discuss with your churches as to where it's going to lead us to. Anyone who couldn't make tonight and hasn't, isn't able to make the next ones, if you can encourage them to watch the roadshows that are currently on the YouTube channel. Well, we've got number one on, and this one will be on at some point. Um, and we'd like feedback uh, to Joyce Keatley, who is uh, the secretary for, for the part of Westmoreland. Her email addresses on the... Her emails on your sheet. Um, I think you've all been given. Um, and she'll welcome any feedback from you all. And then any final decisions are going to be made at the November Deanery Synod and Survey meeting. Um, we're going to say the grace together. Let's say this together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.